Hey gang, what's up? Welcome back here to another edition of Intuitive Angling and really appreciate you guys uh, stopping by and checking the video out today. We're going to be talking today about how to rig a shaky head correctly and from my experience just from watching people I fish around and hearing people talk about it, I think that a lot of people, maybe the majority of bass anglers, rig a shaky head incorrectly. So I'm going to show you guys the correct, actually there's two different ways you can rig it. I'm going to show you the two correct ways to rig it that's going to definitely lab, land, or definitely add up to a lot more uh, fish in the boat per the bites you get because a shaky head is one of those lures that you can lose a lot of fish on. So we're going to help you guys not lose fish on shaky heads here. Um, real quick guys, just a couple of quick reminders. Just wanted to uh, let everybody know if you're interested in supporting the channel by becoming a member. Uh, it's one of the best ways you can support the channel and as members you get extra videos that are not seen by the public every week. Uh, access to my personal email address for your fishing questions and if you're interested just on the my you can go to my youtube homepage and click the about section and then on the about section it says intuitive memberships and it gives you all the info for there much appreciated okay guys i'm going to show you first of all i'm going to show you how not to rig a shaky head and like and which is the way that most people rig it and then i'm going to show you how to, to rig it correctly so um, one I like, I've been using quite a bit is this Gamagatsu Tricky Head right here. This, I really like this. It's got a good O'Shaughnessy bend in it. And for most of my shaky head guys, I either use a, a Zoom Trick Worm or a Zoom Finesse Worm. Um, if I'm fishing a lake that has a lot of different uh, mixed species, like a lot of spotted bass, smallmouth and largemouth with clear water, I'll use the four inch model. And if uh, primarily largemouth, uh, a little bit more off colored water, I use a Trick Worm. So the first thing you know, you have to do, guys, well, well first of all, I'm going to show you how, how not to rig it. So first thing that a lot of people do is they come through like this, and then they just bury the hook right in the middle of the shaky head like that. See, it's just buried right in. It's not, it's not coming through or anything. Guys, you're going to lose a bunch of fish if you do this, because most of the time on a shaky head, you're fishing it on six to ten pound test line a spinning rod a lot of times and even though this is a wire hook and a smaller worm with six to eight to ten pound test line you still have a tremendous amount of plastic to penetrate right there so you've got to penetrate that plastic and then you have to penetrate the mouth of the fish with the barb or a lot of times you're going to lose them so a lot of times, if you if you rig it like this, you're not only going to lose fish. The ones you have hooked, a lot of times, are going to be barely hooked. So, don't do it like this. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go through this and show you again. First of all, a little trick that's going to help out on all your worms. You want to make sure that you bite off just a hair, like maybe a sixteenth of an inch of it, and it gives you a flat surface. And that flat surface allows the shaky head to seed a lot better. So, bite a little bit of it off like that come through about an eighth of an inch you don't want to come through any more than that because see the keeper there you want to make sure that that keeper is secure and if you come through too much it's not going to set right so make sure it sets on there like that and you see see how the keeper is just outside of the the uh, plastic there that's what you want because that's going to hold it real good so the next thing you do is bunch your worm up and come all the way through the top guys just like that all the way through and then once you do that, make a channel, start going back and forth like that. And what I'm, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to make that hole a little bit larger, which is going to give me easier penetration. And then there's two different ways that I'll rig it and fish it. My favorite is just like this. See, I've got the hook point completely exposed. You can see it right there. It's sticking out. It's not even in the plastic. The barb is completely exposed. And I, as long as the worm's straight, and if I'm, if I'm fishing a fairly clean bottom, like, you know, a gravel, sandy, uh, mud bottom, maybe even a small rock, this is the way I like to fish it, guys. You don't get hardly hung up, and you're going to land so many more fish like this because you're already through the plastic, and when that fish hits, it just comes down like that. You got the barb right there immediately. The other way I, I rig it is if I'm fishing... A little bit more snaggy area say for example i'm fishing it around boat docks or maybe around some brush piles or some larger rocks or bluffs i just simply take that point and put it back in the top of it like that see the point is buried and now it becomes extremely weedless but at the same time when that fish bites it that collapses off of there like that and you've got the hook point on there 
So the main thing guys is always run your hook all the way through the worm when you first set it up. Don't ever just, just come in straight in the middle like that and leave it. It's gonna definitely cost you fish. So it's gonna definitely help out. I guarantee that if you get, you know, 50 bites on a shaky head, it's gonna help you land 25% more fish than you would if you didn't have it hooked up correctly. So hope it helps out guys. We'll talk later, see ya.